Well, uh, indeed, uh, we had a long debate about uh, Solvency II and uh, also uh, on the implementing measures. Uh, well, the main change since uh, these debates, and I won't bore you with uh, some of the issues which we raised already in the last parliament, but uh, the main uh, change which we have seen and which has also shaped uh, negotiations over the last month uh, was how to deal with uh, securitized products. And uh, I must say I have uh, questions to the Commission uh, regarding this. So um, uh, just to give you briefly the history, uh, when uh, for the example of triple B uh, securitized products, uh, the risk factor was uh, first calibrated and estimated in October 2011. The factor was 20%. In, uh, then uh, IOPA was tasked to look into detail whether this calibration is correct. So they came up uh, that uh, if you take uh, securitized products of high quality, that such a calibration could be reduced to 17% for triple B. Then there was a wild debate in the Commission, DG ECFIN putting pressure on DG Markt, uh, and, uh, and then this was reduced to 8.5% in a draft in March 2014. Then uh, there was even more pressure, and it was reduced in July 2014 to a factor of 5%. And now, in what you propose to us, the factor has been reduced to 3%. What, me, what does this mean? And the same happened uh, similarly for products triple A, double A, and A. What this means is that the riskiness of products is now not driven by empirical evidence on financial markets, but it is driven by political objectives. We know that this is already the case in banking regulation and insurance regulation when it comes to government bonds. In government bonds, the state tells the economic actors that a risk which is actually there doesn't exist in uh, regulatory affairs. Now we create a second asset class, securitized products, where the state says this risk is actually much lower uh, than what the market thinks. So the state believes it knows uh, by a, a dimension of five times better what the state, what what a risk actually is. And I do believe this is not the role of the state because the, ro the role of the state in regulating an insurance is to make sure that the insurance has enough capital in order to meet its obligations. And therefore, it is critical that risk assessment is not, is not following a logic of prudential stimulus. And what is happening here is to try to use financial regulation in order to boost economic development. Obviously, I agree with Burkhard Balz, insurances are important in order to invest. But that doesn't justify, that doesn't justify to fiddle politically the, the, the risk weights. And this is what the Commission has done without empirical evidence. I would like to know, where is your study to prove to us that such a dramatic reduction in, in, in capital to, to an insurance has to hold against securitized products is justified. Where is your study? Why did you reduce so strongly these figures against the evidence produced by IOPA based on a thorough study? And, uh, and this is the reason why we have asked that this is put to a vote in order to keep the timelines. Obviously, we know, and we spoke with the rapporteur, we have the meeting tomorrow. Finally, we asked for a long time to have a meeting, but we will discuss it with, uh, with the Commission. I hope IOPA is there. But I can only warn that if economic, uh, we have economic problems, that we make the same mistake again with the, which the United States has done. Basically, to close the eyes to the risks of, uh, in this case, mortgage products do not really make sure that economic actors hold enough capital against the risks because you want to have economic growth. Economic growth uh, is important in this situation, sustainable growth, obviously, but it is not the role of financial regulation uh, that risk weights are changed again. We do not need a second asset class like government bonds where the state knows better what risk is. 
and I would really appeal to colleagues to support a critical view on this uh, uh, treatment of securitized products, and we will have the same discussion again when we talk about the LCR. So thanks for listening, and I'm looking forward to a thorough explanation by the Commission based on empirical facts why these risk weights are appropriate. Thank you, Sven, for giving the floor to the Commission. I have some colleagues who asked the floor in the catch the eye